Dragon Bones. I've been hearing about this 2D animation software for a while now, and I've been really curious to try it out myself, especially since I've received quite a few positive feedbacks about Dragon Bones from you guys, and was also told that it was pretty similar to Spine Pro. Except, you know, it's free. So I thought I'd put Spine Pro and Dragon Bones side by side to see the strengths and the weaknesses each animation software has upon the other. Spoiler alert, both of them are better in some aspects and less good in others. My goal here is to simply show you the comparison between the two. For my experiment, I've took one of my existing Spine projects, in which I used most of Spine Pro features. I tried to replicate the project in Dragon Bones without losing quality and improving it if possible. To make the most accurate comparison, I've used exactly the same assets and tried to keep the meshes and the bone structure as close to the original as I could. Then I went through all stages of the animation process and at each stage compared the capabilities of Dragon Bones to those of Spine. So, let's see how they performed. The first thing we do with the animation software is import our character images into it. Now, in Spine, before we can start using the character assets, we have to export them from Photoshop using a special script, which converts the Photoshop layers into images and creates a JSON file. It is a lengthy and slightly complex procedure that can take a few tries to get it done right. With Dragon Bones, however, we can just take our PSD file, drag it into the editor window, and it will work, just like that. Very intuitive no scripts involved. To tell you the truth, I was quite surprised and really liked how much simpler it was to import character images into Dragon Bones. So, Dragon Bones takes this round for sure. The next step would usually be creating the meshes. I've put all my effort to make the Dragon Bones meshes look identical to those in Spine Project and place all of the vertices at exact same positions. But this is where I've started to face some unfortunate disadvantages of Dragon Bones. I've noticed that for some reason, Dragon Bones would slightly stretch the image as soon as I turned it into a mesh. Here, see? It was pretty weird and I didn't find a way to fix the issue. If you have an idea as to what causes this or how to fix that, please leave a comment down below. Also, for no apparent reason, some of my meshes became distorted, as you can see here, and it took me a few tries to figure out a way to get proper results with Dragon Bones. There is a learning curve to any new software, of course, but in this respect, Spine is much more accessible. In addition, both programs have Auto Generate or Auto Trace feature, designed to help you define the mesh boundaries for your shapes. I've tested this feature in both Dragon Bones and Spine using the same image. And here is the result in Dragon Bones. And that's how it looks like in Spine. You can see that the difference is pretty significant. Unfortunately, the auto generated mesh from Dragon Bones is simply not usable. So, my conclusion is that when it comes to meshes, Spine is way more reliable than Dragon Bones. This round goes to Spine. Next, we're moving on to creating a rig. I found the bones creation process in Dragon Bones very similar to the process in Spine. The only difference is that in Dragon Bones, if you create a bone on top of the image, the new bone will automatically be named after the image and the image will be assigned to the new bone. No need to do it manually after the bone is created or by holding the control key, as in Spine. This is a very useful feature that saves you time and effort. Therefore, Dragon Bones takes this round. After we've completed the core rig, we should proceed to the inverse kinematic constraints. If you are not familiar with this feature, here is what it does in a nutshell. It allows you to create an anchor for the bones. So, when you move the anchor around, the constrained bones adjust their position automatically in accordance to the movement constraints. This is quite useful when animating the legs, for example. The process of creating the IK constraints in Spine is not very straightforward, and it takes a few tries to get used to it. In Dragon Bones, however, all you need to do is select the bones that you want to constrain and click a single button. That's it, really. Super simple and works like a charm. 
This is the most commonly used scenario for the IK constraints, and therefore, this point goes to dragon bones. Next, we start binding the meshes to the bones. This step allows us to easily deform the character images later, during the animation process. At first, this process in dragon bones seemed to me pretty similar to the process in spine. You select the mesh, choose the bones that you want to bind, and click a button to automatically generate the mesh weights. OK, good. The automatic weights work pretty well for the simple meshes. However, in some cases, such as with the hair over there, I usually need to make some manual adjustments to make it look right. And here is where I stumbled upon another problem in Dragon Bones. To adjust the mesh weights in Dragon Bones, you have to select a bone, then manually select the vertices that need to be changed, and modify the weights, like so. You also need to make the calculations of how much weight you want to assign on your own. Sorry if I'm getting too much into the technical details, but what I'm trying to say is that such a process is very time-consuming, especially if you have several meshes that you need to adjust. Spine, on the other hand, gives you a nifty option of painting the weights, like so. This feature allows you to fix a mesh within seconds, and the result looks pretty awesome too. It is much easier than the work that you have to do in Dragon Bones. So, Spine takes this round. Last step before proceeding to the animation stage is to get our character's rig ready for 2.5D animation. To achieve this effect, we can make certain bones move opposite each other, like shown here. In Spine, this feature is called Transform Constraints. It allows you, for example, to make the front and the back of the head move in opposite directions, creating an illusion of a three-dimensional character. And it is as easy as it looks. Also, the use of transform constraints really simplifies the animation process, because it allows you to move the whole head with just a single bone. Unfortunately, as it turns out, Dragon Bones does not support any advanced rigging techniques except for the IK constraints. So, Spine Pro takes this round as well. Once the rig is finally complete, we move on to the animation stage of the project. As I've said previously, Dragon Bones doesn't support many of the advanced rigging techniques, and therefore, creating a 3D illusion was not a simple task. Basically, I had to animate each mesh directly, so that it would look like the character turns her head towards the screen. Not going to lie, it took me a while to get to a somewhat okay result. I could definitely do better if I were to spend even more time animating the meshes. But the process felt too time-consuming, as it was. And then, during the animation process, I realized I was facing an even bigger problem. You see, to make the movement of the character look smooth and realistic, you have to follow the 12 principles of animation. One of the core principles, follow-through and overlapping action, states that some parts of the character's body should move slightly before or slightly after the other parts. Spine makes it extremely easy to apply this principle by allowing you to simply offset certain keyframes of a looping animation. It takes literally seconds to turn this animation into this animation. And you don't even need to be a pro. Dragon Bones, however, does not offer any solution for this. So, if you want to have an overlapping action in Dragon Bones, you'll need to move all the keys manually, create the corresponding keys properly to close the loop, and if you've configured the curves for ease in and ease out, well, the configuration will be ruined, and you'll have to make the adjustments for that as well. Bottom line, if this sounds like a lot of work to you, that's because it really is. I could have spent a few more hours to fix the offsets and the curves, but I decided to stop right there. The same actions that would take us seconds to perform in Spine take minutes, if not hours, in Dragon Bones, simply because it lacks a certain functionality. In terms of the animation process, Spine proves to be more efficient and therefore receives another point. Another key feature that was kind of missing for me in Dragon Bones was the ability to constrain the bone to follow a certain path. What this means is that these kind of animations would be very hard to create in Dragon Bones, not to mention a snake slithering animation or a proper tentacle movement. 
Spine allows you to make those considerably easily by using the Path Constraints feature, and therefore, it deserves another point. Now, one more thing before we move on. If your game relies heavily on the character customization, you will need an easy way to switch between different character skins. In order to see how another skin will look like in Dragon Bones, you'll have to completely replace the character images. You cannot configure a new skin set for the same skeleton in Dragon Bones Editor. The only way you can switch between the skins is in the game engine and through the code. Spine, on the other hand, offers a better solution. You can configure multiple skins for the same character inside the editor itself and easily switch between them. You can add certain bones to specific skins and even animate them differently. See the heads that I've animated here? They're all just different skins. Moreover, in Spine, you don't need to have a separate set of images for each skin. Here, for instance, the original image is white, and I'm only changing the colors in Spine itself to create different skins. This is very efficient. So, when it comes to character customization, Spine takes the cup. And since we've already mentioned the code, I decided to export my project from Dragon Bones and import into Unity. The process looks pretty much the same as with Spine. You need a special runtime package, and once it is installed, you'll be able to import and play your Dragon Bones animations. I didn't see any major differences at the first glance. So, in order to try and settle this, I've decided to take a closer look at the game engine support and the API documentation. First off, apparently, Spine supports more game engines than Dragon Bones, and that's already a big advantage. Also, after looking into the Dragon Bones API documentation, I came to a conclusion that it has a very basic functionality in general, especially if compared to Spine. I'm sorry, but it's just that Spine Unity Runtime supports some really cool features. For instance, you can turn your spine rig into a ragdoll when the character dies. That, for me, is a huge yes. Sorry, Dragon Bones, but I have to say that's another one for spine. Well, now that we are pretty much done with the animation process, it's time to go back to the pricing issue of each software. While the professional license of spine will cost you a biting $300, at least for now, Dragon Bones is completely free. You can't really get a better offer than that, so Dragon Bones wins the last round. So, from what we saw in this video, Dragon Bones does not offer as many solutions and advanced animation features as Spine Pro. But that's the thing, those are advanced features. Dragon Bones is still a good animation software that was really fun to play around with. And if you are a beginner animator, it could be a good fit for you, since it is free. With Dragon Bones, you can learn simple character rigging and simple mesh animation, and you can start bringing your characters to life. But if you plan to make professional animations, I'd still recommend going with Spine Pro. It allows producing higher quality animations much easier and faster than Dragon Bones, which means that if you're a freelancer, you'll be able to fulfill more customer orders. And if you're an indie developer, you can release your game sooner. I really hope this video did justice to both Spine Pro and Dragon Bones. I also hope it made the comparison between the two clearer. If you think that I missed something, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next time!